Welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. This is episode 248. I'm your host, Chris Britton. This is an action packed episode. So let's go. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all of the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. So check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Joining me again in the studio this week is my sexy ranch hand co host. You know him, you love him. His name is Calder Ness. What's going on, Calder? Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. Let's get rowdy indeed. We have so much stuff to talk about and a, a surprise. A lot of stuff. And a lot uh. of stuff. And <laughs> it's dumb how much stuff we need to get through. But. Before we go too far, we brought somebody onto the podcast. We're really excited to get onto the podcast. You've heard his name a bajillion times, and he just won the esteemed status of Dial H super fan. That's going to be none other than Christian Bogan. Welcome to the podcast, man. Oh, man, guys. I'm so excited. <laughs> I, well, I can't even begin to explain how excited I am. So. Well, thank you very much. Uh, congratulations on your arbitrary award that we just made up. But it's all yours. Oh, hey, man. come on. It's a pretty great award. It, it is. Yeah. Awesome. You know, it, it is. It is. I, I was a little sad I didn't get to hear of all the Calder's, you know, you know, thank you speech. But I got the gist of it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, we want – Everybody out there in podcast land to get to know you as a player. So we're going to have a little interview like we normally do when we bring people onto the show. So I will start us off. Yeah. Why don't you tell us how and when, how or when, did you get into the game of Hero Clicks? Oh, man. Okay. So when I first started, it was actually, I, I don't even remember, it was probably 2007 or eight. whenever that really awesome Nightcrawler came out, um, the first one. Uh, that could teleport across the map or something crazy. Oh, yeah. That was actually Spider-Man. when I first, uh, yeah. Um, that's when I first started playing. Um, but then I only played a few matches. But then fast forward um, several years, uh, right about the time like Superior Foes drops, uh, was that 2016? That I was actually at work talking to a guy about. It. We were just talking about board games, and he's like, "Man, I wish there was you know some other board games I could play. You know, something that." you know, kind of like a D and D miniature. And I was like, have you not heard of hero clicks? And he goes, what's hero clicks. And then we totally geeked it out for like the rest of the night. And we were just, we got so excited that like, seriously, like the next day we, we ordered our hero clicks and we just got into it. <laughs> That's one of my biggest pet peeves is when people are like huge comic book fans, huge board gaming together. And they don't know what hero clicks is. Huge. Oh pet yeah. Peeves. All right, so what are your what are some of your favorite uh, pieces or combos of figures that you like to play in HeroClix? Okay, so my favorite piece, I guess, right now is uh, King Shark. Uh, there's nothing quite like putting him on a water map and making your opponent cry. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, recently, I've been playing a, a lot of Gotham City. Uh, so just the the shenanigans you can pull off of Batgirl and Green Arrow and the penguins put together. Um, it's funny because that's, you know, this previous KO I had played at, um, there was uh, a bunch of guys playing stop clicks and it's nothing like, you know, seeing the, the life kind of drain from them, you know, all that joy and happiness go out of their eyes when they realize they can't use stop clicks, uh, from, you know, when green arrow hits them. <laughs> so, but that, yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it for right now. So gotcha. are you typically going to be more of a meta player uh, or is that just a recent thing? You're just, sounds like you're playing more casually. Um, well, being a family man, I really only have time to play meta, uh, you know, just kind of make it worth my while. I enjoy it in a casual game every now and again, but definitely more meta player. Nice. Very nice. Uh, so what is your favorite format to play? Um, 300 modern. I just like all the different combinations that kind of go into that, you know, seeing what people can kind of bring to the table and um, just the, the thought process that goes behind putting all those extra game elements together along with your main force. Nice. If people are going to sit down and play with you, what venue, where are you located at? Well, uh, like I told you guys, I'm in Southwest Michigan uh, and I, I don't want to make call their cry or anything, but pretty much it's a, Probably about a two-hour drive to anywhere I want to go play. Um, there's Woo-hoo! some closer places that are about 
half hour, maybe 45 minutes. Um, and you know, I, I go north of Detroit, um, uh, and then in Kalamazoo down in the South Bend, Elkhart, those kind of surrounding areas. Uh, but typically fantasy games in South Bend, I'd say is the, the place I go to most often. Are you, are you going to be driving to origins this year? Just out of curiosity. Okay, I really, really want to. The only concern that I have is that my wife is actually pregnant. And uh, in about that time, or no, in, oh, that's, isn't that uh, in Columbus, right? Or is that, that, yeah, that's yeah it's Columbus, yeah. Okay, I was just making sure I'm thinking of the same place. So she'll be eight months pregnant, and uh, she's like, so you're going to leave me home with the three kids while you go off on a whole weekend by yourself? Like, well, don't make me feel so bad about it, sweetie. Come on, we're <laughs> not a bad guy here. But no, it's it's some um, uh, it's something that uh, I think we're planning on having me go. But uh, we're just gonna kind of see how the whole pregnancy progresses. Gotcha. Obviously, gonna say you probably would awesome. definitely make your wife happier if you stayed home. But <laughs> I think Calder and I might be <laughs> might be going. So it would be a good way to oh, I think man. our combined happiness might – I'm not, like, trying to you know, throw shade or anything. <laughs> right. Just saying. Just wait till I tell her that. <laughs> tell her as a uh, as a Dilate Superfan ambassador to the game of Heroclix, you're required to go yeah. to Origins, and then we can all go to Origins. Um, right. It would be my duty. <laughs> I, I I'll have be been, failing you guys. I have been messaged by some listeners – uh, specifically saying like, hey, we all need to go to Origins, uh, especially because that's going to be like my last hurrah before I leave for the army. So I have people that are right. like, let's, let's do a big thing. We're gonna we're gonna hang out. We're gonna play games. And so I'm like, I I want to do this. So I'm, all I'm saying is you should be there. <laughs> yeah. Calder, do you have anything else? No, I think that's about it. That's it. <laughs> okay. We did it. We did it! Okay, well, here Yay. at Dial H, we like to bring you up-to-date information about the game and other nerd-related content. So let's get into the news section. Previews, previews, previews. We got quite a bit. Quite a, a, a bit. Quite a bit, huh? So many that yeah. we're not going to get through all of them because, holy crap. But I do want just want to start... <laughs> off by saying we did get two previews for two more chases from the batman metal the dc rebirth set uh they're pretty much garbage I was, and i was yeah. disappointed uh so, you know uh shout out to all the ones we're not gonna do devastator uh good but uh common values are trash so put it trash uh waste the money if you pull him clayface good no willpower trash throw him in the trash beast boy sculpt's cool dials trash throw him in the trash all right now let's <laughs> talk about something else all right, hey, well... Don't we diss the Red Death. Oh. <laughs> Was that a thing? Red Death, also trash. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Red <laughs> Death, Speed Force sucks, trash. Okay, Zachary well, we, we all yeah, did sucks. choose one that we did want to talk about, a piece. Uh, Christian, why don't you go ahead and let us know what you want to talk about for this? What are you excited for for this upcoming set? Uh, sure. Uh, so, Starfire... Is the one I'm, I'm probably looking forward to, uh, at least out of the previews that we've seen so far. You know, she's her typical Teen Titan person. Um, she has outlaws, Teen Titans, cosmic. Uh, was that warrior keyword? And she has the uh, the Titans Reborn trait, which is just super similar to that X Men trait. Where and she's given a move action after a resolution, she can use that Teen Titans ability at no cost. But then she's got a, a pretty stellar dial, either the hundred or fifty point value. So starting at her 100 point value, she's got her top three clicks, you know, just a hypersonic speed. But then her attack power, it's a special attack power. She has energy explosion and she can use it at no, no cost uh, as a ranged attack uh, while using hypersonic speed. Uh, so you would still have a range and they clarify that. But with a seven range uh, and then 11 speed, so you're hitting about 15 squares out with double bolt on energy explosion, which... Uh, pretty much is going to take out some swarm teams, which is pretty fantastic. Also, she you know has um, 18 defense and vulnerability, uh, four damage top dial with shape change, which is I think pretty nuts too. It, you know, 15 square swing hit for four damage. That's always fun. Um, and then our 50 point dial, she has running shot pulse wave, which is you know never a bad combo in this game. 
Uh, but then she even has a stop clip, uh, eight special uh, defense, and then her special speed she has is charge, flurry, uh, found neutralized. Uh, so <laughs> it's still just crazy. Like, charge in for four, 11 attack, oh, four damage, battle fury, uh, for, and then I'm going to flurry on you. I mean, <laughs> it's just yeah, nuts. It's and then, pretty good. And then on top of that all, she's quintessent, so you can't even outwit her, and she's got willpower. So I'm not going to lie. I did not – I don't know why, why I completely missed this when I first read this character. I completely missed the quintessence team ability, and that's, like, one of the major draws that makes her so good. I was, sure. like, oh, oh, yeah. I was like, she's okay. She's okay. And I didn't even notice that it had quintessence until tonight before we started recording. So, wow. <laughs> There you go. Way better than I thought it was originally. <laughs> I can totally see why you were excited about that. Oh yeah. Oh man, I still love these Teen Titans. The name of their like powers on these dials is just it's it's my new bread and butter. Like her running shot is scree. <laughs> <laughs> her, yep. her info might be my favorite though a spicy princess from a spicy planet <laughs> dude her hypersonic that. speed is called space fire is more aerodynamic than you'd think oh, okay so <laughs> like how <laughs> it doesn't matter uh, it doesn't matter it's it's still really that's good. awesome but um, seriously I, I love it this is hilarious she is number 55 in the set, so she's going to be a yes. super rare, but, man, so good. that 50-point uh, dial is nutso. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, it. Uh, Chris, you want to hit us with the next one? No, 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 or, no, no, okay, no, no I'm not going to switch yeah. gears entirely. Why don't you I just go. realized we have to totally switch. Yeah. <laughs> so, keeping in the set, uh, one of the few figures that I didn't uh, blatantly just say was garbage right away was none other than Citizen Steel, Nathaniel Haywood. He is 023B. He's going to be our Uncommon Prime. Uh, continuing the theme of Uncommon Primes being uh, very good in the competitive game. I don't know how great he's going to be in Sealed. He looks solid, but let's just jump into the dial, shall we? He has two traits. The first one is the Haywood Legacy. When Citizen Steel is hit with a close attack after resolutions, he'll be attacker one penetrating damage. That's a little bonkers, huh? Yeah. Next up is the second trait, even better than the first. You're like, Calder, how can he get better? Just, just hold on. Let me tell you. <laughs> Opposing characters with giant damage symbols, so sorry, colossal damage symbol, can't be placed within three squares of Citizen Steel. If Citizen Steel costs 110 points, they can't be placed within four squares instead. They can be moved, so they can move up. So you're like, why is this good? How many Colossals? Well, in case you, you know, everyone are like me and Christian Bogan here, uh, and you play competitive hero clicks, there's pretty much a Colossal figure on every team, a Colossal Retaliator. And they are placed when using retaliation. So most of them swing within three squares, right? That's their close attack. You have to place them such they can make an attack, blah, blah, blah. Giant Reach is three squares for Colossals, guys. It's, believe it or not, it's not within four, so that doesn't really matter too much. So he basically just says, no, nah, you can't retaliate. And there are a few Colossals that I think have more than three squares on their range. Either way, let's go back to that first trait. If he's hit with a close attack, what happens? Oh, yeah, that's right. You deal him one penetrating damage, and they die for the same – sorry, not the same points. But for 35 points, you just get those two traits, which is awesome. All right, let's talk about his 110-point dial, Okay. Besides that awesomeness that is those traits, he has Indom, no range. He's a JSA team ability. He has a special defense power for his first four clicks of his dial. It's invincible. Citizen Steel cannot be moved or placed by opposing effects. Mind control me. You want to move me? Nope. Not going to do it. You want to telekinesis me? Nah, I don't think so. All right. He is invulnerable, invincible. It's all your stuff, all right? He is charged uh, with Quake and four damage. His close combat expert, his entire dial, which is dumb. So you can do four damage the entire time. You can do six damage if he wants. He only has a ten attack top dial. He goes into some sidestep later down the dial. Like next, uh, who is that? Four clicks, a so two clicks charge, four clicks of sidestep. Loses Quake. Uh, when he loses his special defense power on click five, he gets impervious. Then he goes down to invulnerability on his last two clicks. So he's eight clicks long for 110 points. A pretty solid bruiser who might be really, you know, work really well in sealed and work really well in battle royales. But for the 35-point little sidestep, close combat expert, impervious, you know, colossal deterrent, I think he is awesome and will see so much play. Hopefully I'm right about this. Like, like when we saw Spiderling, I was like, oh, she shuts down colossals. 
but kind of not really. But this guy <laughs> definitely does, and I'm definitely right about this one. <laughs> you got to be right sometime. That's I, all uh, I, I hope. Kind of, but not uh, has, really. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he has I, society and celebrity keywords, by the way, yeah. so a little tough to put on teams, but I like him a lot. Yeah. Uh, that's cool that you could, like, place him next to, like, one of your friendlies who had hit a colossal yep. or, you know, just any other opposing character and then just bury him up and basically can shut down colossal retaliation that way. For sure. So. He's really good. I'm really excited that he's not the super rare prime. <laughs> oh, lot, yeah. Sure. For a lot of people out there, I'm sure that they're also happy about that. All right. Is that all you want to say about Citizen Steel? That's all I got to say about Citizen Steel, man. All right. Let, let's switch gears entirely. Here. I don't know if you guys knew this, but we did get the dials for the Too Many Spider-Man OP kit. Uh, sure we, we, we got it. We got a Scarlet Spider. It's okay. Sure we, we, we got a Spider-Man, Peter Parker. It's okay. It's, it's not bad. It's pretty good, actually. But the one I want to talk about is one that I'm positive we are never going to get ever made in the game of Heroclix again. And that's going to be I Apex. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm glad you said that before I did. <laughs> I, Apayek? I'm not really sure. Here's what you need to know about this figure. 100 points. No clue. Four range. No team ability. Keywords. Dark Avengers. Yeah. yeah. I, I actually really like the Dark Avengers, so seeing him get that keyword is really awesome. Uh, Thunderbolts, Deity, Monster, Mystical. He has two, four, six, seven clicks of life. And he's going to start with some improved movement, ignores elevated terrain, and ignores hindering terrain. Uh, he has a trait. It's called Your Death Inspires Me. If I, I pick, KOs a character with a close attack after resolutions, remove all action tokens from him. Because that's not good. That's not, that's not good at all. Oh, yeah, he does have Indom. Uh, no other special combat symbols, but he does start off with top dial, 10 speed with a special movement power. We'll get to that. 11 attack naked, 18 defense with invul, and I believe that's 3 printed damage naked as well. What does this special speed power do? It's called Six Arms of Whirling Death. That's an <laughs> awesome name, by the way. Just, just letting you know. Sidestep, flurry, but can make 3 close attacks instead of 2. <laughs> I love it. It's pretty so good. awesome. Pretty yeah, good. It's just so nuts. Awesome. So, I mean, yeah, for 100 points, it doesn't look like it until they until you look at that speed power that he's going to do a lot of damage. But, I mean, you can do 9 damage in one turn with this 100-point. What's his attack point. value on that click again? 11. Yeah, see? Okay, so, all right. <laughs> that, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. But his dial does this weird thing. He has a special attack power, but he never has it at the same time he has the special speed power, and it alternates back and forth between the two. Starting with on click one is the speed one, and then it goes on click number two is going to be the attack, and back and forth like that. On click number two, he switches to charge with 10 speed. He goes up to 12 attack. The special attack power is called the Decapitator, which is also another awesome name for a power. It gave, uh, gives him uh, blade claws and fangs, and when I Apex uses it, and the result is five or six. Damage Dell is penetrating. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> it's just nuts. This figure is so much damage output in one figure. I love it so much. Um, so the rest of the dial, it, it, it attack value goes 11, 12, 11, 11, 10, 10, 9. Um, and on the last three clicks of his dial, he has steel energy, and he also has one click of steel Jeez. energy on click number three. So, he's one of those characters where you might actually want to take the pushing damage depending on what is happening on the board. So, if you do manage to get in, you're like sidestep or whatever, and they and you want to push to get because you think they're going to move away, you might want to get that charge, that next click. And it does that, that speed power, and then goes to charge, and then that speed power goes to charge, and then that speed power. It's, it's a weird dial, very interesting to look at, but super cool. On the last two clicks of his dial, not only does he have Steel Energy, he has Regen and Shape Change and Plasticity. So 
it's really awesome dial. I really like it. The color scheme on it just looks cool because blue and black is cool to me, but that's just me. It doesn't really affect the game that much. But, <laughs> I mean, if you want to hit them, they're not going anywhere. And if you just want to stand right. in region, you have a little bit of defensive ability with your shape change. All in all, I think this is actually a really good character. You're never going to get him again. So for those people out there that do like the Dark Avengers or do like the Thunderbolts uh, keywords, this is definitely a must-have figure for you. Mm. Awesome. I'm glad uh, I'm glad you like the spider people. Cuz I sure don't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we it does did get sound a pretty lot awesome. of them. Uh, the only good spider is a dead spider, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Actually, and if you read um the storyline with him in it, he's he's pretty much a gigantic jerk, so a lot of people oh, okay. want to kill him. Um, all he wants to do is murder people, which is totally represented on his dial. It makes a lot oh, of sense. Oh, I agree. <laughs> So. Yeah, no, sick. I like that a lot. All right, we could go on and on with previews. I promise you we could, but I heard uh, some people actually like some of the segments we do from time to time when we bring people on. So how about a little bit of Bad Samaritan? Oh, buddy. All right, boys and girls, this is a game show. This is how it's played. I have three modern age figures in front of me. My contestants, it's going to be Calder and Superfan Christian. They don't know what they are, but they have a random number generator in front of them. They're going to give me a number. I'm going to give them an associated clue based off of the list of clues in front of me. They're going to get one guess per round on what that figure is. If they get it right, they get a point. If they don't get it right by the end of three guesses per figure, then I get a point. And I like winning this because I don't like when Calder shuts me out. It sucks. <laughs> so, if they get a right answer, it sounds like this. If they get a wrong answer, it sounds like this. You guys ready to go? Yep. Bring it on. Calder, give me a number. Number 12. All right. Number 12 on this list is any special combat symbols. That's a big negative. <laughs> Starting out strong. Right. Starting out strong. We do encourage awesome. people out there in podcast land, if you want to play along, go ahead and pause the podcast. See if you can come up with an answer. Press play. See if you're right. And if you beat Calder, make sure that you tweet in or message us on Facebook that you beat Calder. That's really important for my ego. <laughs> Are you done? Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, for my first guess, I'm going to go with Grizzly. Grizzly. Locked in with Grizzly. <laughs> Oh, uh, man. Uh, I'm just going to say Outrider. Outrider. Okay. Locked in with Outrider. Survey says... <laughs> Let's move on to clue number two. Guess what, Chris? What? It's number 20. It's a free play. Yeah. Uh, 17 through 20 on this list of free plays. My contestants can guess any uh, one thing that they want to know about this figure. So what do you want to know about this figure? Go with set. Oh, yeah. Set. Right, Always set. set. <laughs> Oh, that really, really narrows it down. It is going to be the Wonder Woman Gravity Feed. Ooh, look at that. Look at this guy. All right, in that case, so Raven, she had flight for sure. Some of the Wonder Woman's had Indom, and there's like five other characters. So I'm going to go with Etta Candy. Etta Candy, hmm. locked in for Calder. What about you, Mr. Bogan? Uh, isn't there a – is it a Kid Flash in that set? There is a Kid Flash. That's right. true. There's Kid Flash, there's Cheetah, some other characters. I'm going to say Kid Flash. Kid Flash. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give this to you. It's actually called The Flash, but I know what you're saying. I know where you're going with it. So, uh, Locked in for The Flash survey says... First point. That is going to go to super fan Christian Boat. That is uh, number five from... Yeah. All right. That was pretty good. That was a pretty good guess, guys. I'm not going to lie. Let's move on to uh, figure number two. Calder, give me a clue. Number seven. Number seven is generic keyword, and that is animal. Yeah. Uh, All right. It's one of my favorites. Oh, no, I'm, in, I'm in love already. Um, let's see. I don't know. I don't think you'd be dumb enough to try to sneak Bessie by me. So. <laughs> <laughs> you have no oh, faith how dumb I am. <laughs> 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 uh, I'm gonna go with Chipmunk Hunk. He's a pretty, he's a pretty bad animal. I mean, uh, he's a good guy. I like him a lot. But uh, 
All right. All right. Locked in for Chipmunk Hunt. Pretty out there. So I'm going Chipmunk Hunt for sure. Uh, what about you, Christian? I really, yeah, I really want to go. When Calder got to experience that in full force when we played yeah, against each other yeah. in Chicago. Uh, but I'm going to have to go with one of my favorites and say King Shark. Sure. King Shark. Okay. Locked in with King Shark, survey says. It's a big old negative. We'll move on to clue number two. Number four. Number four is set number. Set number is ten. Oh, so ten. common. Yeah, common. Or is it? Or is it? Mm. Don't you put that doubt like, in me. Right, see? <laughs> see, we could be doing a Ninja Turtle right now, for all we know. <laughs> you know? So set number 10. It's rough. <sighs> set number 10. Hmm. Is Chris doing a bunch of gravity beats? Is that what he's <laughs> doing? Is that what he's trying to do today? Maybe. I kind of want to just say Koi Boy, just to rule him out, too, just to get rid of my, my animals from, from Deadpool and the X-Force. So I'm going to go with Koi Boy. My guess. Okay. He, well, right. Another character from Squirrel Girl comic. All right, locked in yeah. with Koi Boy. <laughs> what about you, Christian? Uh, I'm going to have to go with – I'll go with the Gravity Seed. Um, trying to think of who a number 10 would be. That's probably like a Bebop or a Rocksteady, maybe a Splinter. I'll go Splinter. Bridge. Okay. Locked in for the Rat Master himself, Mr. Splinter. That is going to be negative. <laughs> We'll move on to the last and final clue for this figure. Number three. Number three. All right. That is set. And the set is Deadpool and the X-Force. Oh, oh, man. I was no. close. I was in the wheelhouse. You were. All right. Were dancing animal. around it. Dancing around. Uh, animal, animal number 10, huh? All right. You said Koi Boy. I'm very happy with that. So, okay. Koi Boy. Chipmunk Hunk out of the way. Other animals, Howard the Ducks are rare, Squirrel Girls are rare, Bassie's a super rare. Da, the Grizzly from earlier, he probably has Animal Brood or something like that. Um, he's like a common, uncommon. Tippy Toe would be would be a bad yeah. also a common. Um, what else is there for animal? I think that's really about it. I don't think. Bedlam wasn't. Uh, no. no, I don't. I don't think any of the X Force had the animal. No, team. yeah, like animal powered or anything. So I think we're pretty safe. Uh, I would take Grizzly for my guess. Okay, locked in. You say Grizzly, right? What are you doing, bud? Yeah, Tippy Toe and Grizzly. All right, locked okay. in for Tippy Toe and Grizzly. Survey says yes. Man, all right, this is gonna be. Tippy toe, I've been. Uh, yes. I've been, I've been, uh, no joke. This, I promise, this was there was no collusion wow. before we started recording this episode. Uh, I was reading a lot of Great Lakes Avengers earlier this mm. week. It inspired me to uh, bring up Tippy toe. So nice, dude. Right. I, I love I love Tippy toe. She's so good. So good, really good. <laughs> All right, let's move on to figure number three. Give me a clue. Ah, it's number one. Number one. Oh, I lost my thing. There it is. Uh, that is going to be team ability, and there is no team ability on this figure. Big shocker. Thanks. <laughs> uh, no team ability sets, no X-Men, Hydra, Avengers, Batman family, Batman enemy. Hey, there are a lot of Avengers with the keyword and not the team yeah, ability. Yeah, probably that's true. I am just going to go with mm, the skull. The skull. Locked in with the skull. What about you, Christian? Um, hmm. Try to think of somebody who doesn't have a team ability. Say Batman. <laughs> but Batman has stealth. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> He's constantly, constantly in the shadows. Yeah. Oh, goodness. So I know, like, most people had an EarthX keyword. There was really an EarthX team ability, so there's that. Um, yeah, Karnak. Karnak didn't have oh, a team go. ability. Yeah. So I'll just okay. say Karnak. All right, locked in for Karnak. Survey says... <laughs> Give me another clue. I want us to get it right off the bat one of these days. Uh, 13. 13, opening movement power. Running shot. Running shots. No mm. team ability. 
running shots. I'll be Iceman. I guess Iceman, Bobby, the X Factor, Bobby would uh would have running shots. Maybe the Age of Ultron, not the Age of Ultron, but Age of Apocalypse one might not have a team ability. I don't really know. Mm. Um, ah, right, new title caps got running shots. Hot dialed, no team ability. I might. Now oh, Chris might try to be. I think he's clever here. Would I do that to you, Calder? Would I? Would you? <laughs> like, see, the, the listener can't see Calder's this, face right now, but I can see Calder's face. There's a lot of confusion. There's a lot of doubt going on right now. See it in his eyes. There always, there always is. Every time. Oh man. <laughs> this is our second clue. This is the final figure. Second clue. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Captain America. Captain America. All yeah. right, locked in with Captain all America. That, that will cover all figures with that name. Christian, do you have a yeah, guess? Buddy. Just trying to think of because a lot, a lot of the the figures from the Batman set, all the cops I think had the PD team ability. Yep. So like, who, who would it? Maybe no. Yeah, I was I was about to say the uh, what is what's his name Terry, but he would have Batman ally or something. So yeah, yeah. He had running shots. Two Face had running shot, but he would have Underworld or World, something. Yeah. yeah, most of the police officers they had uh, PD team ability. Uh, Iron Man. Uh, I'll go with Iron Man Iron because Man. Uh, I think there was a set or a few from the Battle World set. Who, okay. Uh, so yeah, Iron Man. So lo- locked in with Iron Man. Survey say. <laughs> Final clue, gentlemen. Final clue. Uh, it's number nine. Number nine is range and number of bolts. <laughs> Such a good set of clues. Ooh. It's gonna be six range with Uno Bolto. Oh. oh, I hate you so much, Chris. Oh, my God. I had to prevent <laughs> the sweep. Wow. Wow. We, we have a good friend on, our good friend Christian Bogan. That's right. Try to say, hey, Christian, you want to have a good time on the podcast? And he starts doing really well in Bad Samaritan. And you're like, oh, I don't know about that. Shut it down. Shut, yeah. Ugh. What a jerk. Hey, all, right. well, all I'm saying is, I'll, I'll give you a clue. This character's background story is almost identical to the plotline of the movie Ghost Dad. Go die. (laughs) (laughs) Fine, whatever, Calder. What a jerk. All right, running shot, six range, one bolt. What was was the other one besides running shot? Was it? No no team ability. ability, No team ability. Okay. Um, (laughs) Excellent clues. Six range, one pull. Now, if he said Iron Man, would that mm. cover Iron Goblin? They're both Tony Stark. Mm. That's my what? question. No. Okay. It wouldn't cover Iron Goblin? Is that what you're saying? No, that is a different... No, that's a different thing. Okay. That was my one my one thought. Uh, what else here? Um, no tune to the... See, now I'm thinking Battle World. Like, which Queen Le Fay, but she had all the speed powers. Yeah. So, it's different. Does, uh, um... Prometheus from Harley Quinn set. Did he have sidestep or running shot? Yeah, he, he had two bolts. I could have swore. Oh, okay. Uh, maybe not, but I think he had sidestep on his dial. All right. Well, let's uh, let's consult the realms real quick and. What? <laughs> <laughs> Cheater! <laughs> I'm joking. How do you think I got the first two right? Hey, hey! I know uh, that. That's how Calder plays all the time. Oh, how uh, dare you! Uh, I can see him right now. He's looking hardcore at his, t- uh, his computer screen. <laughs> He's got, like, an entire command center set up, multiple screens, right. going through the realms. I gotta find it. Really? Really? I'm gonna cross-reference. I mean, like... <laughs> sure, guys. Sure. Whatever. All right. Uh, let's 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 think. Let's figure this out. Running shot, no team ability, six range, one bolt. Oh, Chris, why, why are you the way Iron... Iron uh, Pretty good one, actually. That's pretty good. Didn't one of one of the Deadpool's have running shot? None of them did. Uh, the the finger guns one, he had sidestep. <laughs> then there's the the phasing one. No, nah, none of them had a running shot. Sucked. That was one of my huge complaints. Like, so one had charge, sidestep. Another one had sidestep, and the free phasing. Mm. And that was it. None of them. And then other one had normal phasing. Yeah. <sighs> Cable had X Men for sure. Um, Magneto at Brotherhood, Cable mm-hmm. at more than six range. 
Oh, it's killing me right now. I'm no Hawkeye's got like seven or eight range. Can't do that. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to have a good guess because he's a really bag, like super bag. Oh. I'm gonna get this point, so you might as well just concede. You know what? Admit defeat. I like seeing that look on his face. One of the Star Trek characters. Did they have running shots? Oh, jeez. Come on. That's... I, I know how much you love this. Second. Oh, Star Trek character. <laughs> Man. <laughs> if that's what it is, I'm going to be really, really mad. I'm going to, you know, I'm just going to say Captain. No, they all had the, the stupid Star Trek team ability. Like, they had the um, oh, yeah, yeah, I didn't think planets like or something dumb like that. What about I... one of the uh, turtles? Donatello. Oh, Donatello? Like, the six range? Yeah. You know? I don't know about Donatello with six range. Maybe like, like Krang might he might have a running shot. I know that other one had like charge or something. Mm-hmm. I'm taking I'm taking so long in this guess. The listeners like, oh my gosh, dude, just say <laughs> it already. So I'm just gonna say Krang, I guess. It's wrong. Right. Locked in with Krang. Yeah. Oh, what is your final guess, Christian? Oh uh, gosh. The pressure is on because I got the first two right. <sighs> can, can, I think you, can you sweep? Is it possible? <sighs> Are you going to sweep? <laughs> oh, my goodness. I just want to uh, quote Talladega Nights. Don't you put that evil on me, Ricky Bobby. <laughs> yeah. Put that evil on me. Uh, I'm going to have to go with the, all the chips, I, old war medals off the bridge. <laughs> That's not important. You keep guessing. Well, it says to kick you in the back of the head. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to have to go with Iron Punisher. I know he's got – I'm pretty sure he's got seven range, but I'll just say him. All right, locked in with Iron Punisher. And that answer will be as soon as I ask a question to Calder. Is that a new setup? Because I've never seen that microphone with you before. Is that new? But no, <laughs> this is the microphone I've always had. Yeah. It looks it looks not I I just think it's cuz you never have your uh camera on. The camera on, yeah. Yeah, I don't, I'm never going to see you, the look of the disappointment on your face when I tell you how <laughs> wrong you are. Ah, <laughs> oh, there it is. Yeah, that's going to be 021 Karai. Who? <laughs> Karai. Iron Punisher has six range by the way. Uh, it was from Karai. How do you spell that? K A R I O? No. K A R I. Yeah, thank you. Just pick letters until you get it. You'll feel yeah, it. I got it now. No, I didn't. S T U P I D. That's I'm sure. <laughs> sure how it's like. I prevented the shutout. Oh, oh you guys gosh. can't see it, but I'm flexing right now. Flexing uh, so hard. Watch. Uh, <laughs> I'm not. I'm. I. Oh, my kids need me. I gotta go. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, gentlemen, that was, in fact, how Bats American is played. (laughs) All right, we're going to move on to one more segment. That segment is called Casual Comparisons. Keep your distance, folks, but don't look like you're trying to keep your distance. Uh, I don't know. Fly casual. All right, so Casual Comparisons is a little segment where we generally allow our guest that comes on to pick a character. Mr. Bogan, super fan, has chosen Captain Marvel. And what we have done is each chosen a figure that is that character and the same universe iteration of that character. So this is all going to be 616 universe of Captain Marvel. It will automatically disqualify the new MCU ones, even though they're... Pretty yeah. freaking We're good. We're not doing uh, yeah. Marvel. We're doing Carol Danvers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Carol so Danvers. So uh, there are other names that she has gone by over the years, such as Binary, Miss Marvel. Um, and what we're going to do is basically try and come up with what is going to be the definitive version of Carol Danvers for this podcast, 616. Uh, we're going to talk about three character, three individual figures and try to convince each other that this is the definitive essence of what the character is calder do you want to start us off with the character you chose i think you made me start off uh so <laughs> i did not choose a captain marvel i chose a miss marvel i like that outfit more so that's what we're doing 
Uh, mine is from Civil War, the most recent Civil War set, the only Civil War set. Uh, she is 80 points. She's four range, one bolt. Uh, flight is her only special combat symbols. She has Avengers, Kree, sadly, the pro registration keyword, and Soldier. Uh, she has one trait, which I think is pretty sweet, uh, Photonic Absorption. When Miss Marvel is hit by a character that can use Penetrating Psychic Blast or Pulse Wave, after actions resolve, remove an action token from her. If you can't heal her one click, this can't be ignored. I really like that. I think it's really cool. So if she has no action tokens, all of a sudden, boom, you get to heal her up one. So there's like a pseudo way to heal and also a way that not having willpower doesn't hurt her that bad. So... This Captain Marvel is straight business with charge, super strength, top dial. Very simple. They, they kind of go two by two by two here. So she has six clicks of life with two clicks of charge, super strength, and invulnerability. She has no special damage or any damage power her entire dial. So after charge, super strength, she goes running shot, penetrating psychic blast. And then she goes to a whiff ESD on those clicks. And then she goes to pulse wave and toughness. All the Civil War figures are really simple, but I really, really liked using this Captain Marvel in Civil War. I, I honestly, I really enjoyed pulling her. I liked playing her. Uh, in like the whole one event of Civil War I went to, uh, the map you were on, that flight was a pretty big deal. Being able to ignore Elevated really helped out, so I really liked her for that. Never used her four range a ton because I would always get knocked like past these uh, running shot clicks, which kind of sucked. But the pulse wave was nice, especially in the Battle Royale style that Civil War was. That was awesome, mm -hmm. so... I like her mostly because she's like the only Captain Marvel or Miss Marvel or Carol I've ever played. And uh, she worked really well for me. I still really like uh, her trait. I think it's pretty, you know, fitting for the character. She kind of runs in there, punches someone, then she kind of goes more shooty, scooty booty down dial. So that's my Carol. Right on. Uh, I'm going to go second, and we are going to be talking about Captain Marvel. Not that one. That one's garbage. Uh, <laughs> number 19 from the Guardians of the Galaxy set uh coming in at 150 points with the flight and indom combat abilities with five range one bolt she uh, starts off with hypersonic speed and and uh super strength which sadly no longer works together but back in the day when uh when this piece was made it did she does have two traits uh one of them is really simple it's just called trained pilot it gives her esd which is awesome i really like that the other one which is way more complicated it just brings her back to life on the last three clicks of her dial based off of how you roll. The name of it is Living Up to Captain Marvel's Legacy. That's more important than what it actually does. She has a special damage power called Seventh Sense. Captain Marvel can use Outwit and Probability Control. She does, that ha does have that on top dial, and then she also has that on the last, click, last two clicks of her seven-click long dial, which are two of the three options that you can roll onto from that resurrection trait. Um, now, this is the more current uniform that she is using, not the Miss Marvel outfit. Um, and then just a little bit about the fit, about the character of, of Miss Marvel or Cat, Carol Danvers. She really she, – she got given permission to take upon the mantle on herself of Captain Marvel. She went by Miss Marvel for like the longest time in the comics. But – Captain Marvel was a uh, an actual character in Marvel Comics, but he died in like the seventies. In like the saddest way. Yeah, he had also. like cancer. <laughs> yeah. And died, legit. So um, he is one of the reasons why she even had her powers. He helped train her to become a hero. She really, really looked up to Captain Marvel, and then eventually in the comics, uh, Captain America comes to Miss Marvel and says. You know, it's time. You should take up the mantle. And she says, like, I never felt comfortable doing this. I, I can't live up to his legacy. And Captain America just straight up says, you already have lived up to his legacy. Oh, it's right. like a really powerful mo mo moment good. in the comics and really cool. And it led me to, like, cement her as one of my definite, like, at least top five, maybe top three favorite Avengers of all nice. time. Um, she's a mm. really, really great figure. So I think this dial really – it, the combat values are a little bit low now, and because the hypersonic speed doesn't work with super strength anymore, it's kind of disappointing. But the combat, uh, but overall, it does. It's a really good representation of her. That's my pitch for that one. Um, let's move on to the third one. That's going to be Christian. Take it away. Yeah. Um, so my uh, two oh seven, I believe, is the, the number for that. Um, uh oh, I just lost her. <laughs> uh, anyway. Uh, she's got actually some pretty awesome keywords, uh, like Avengers, Cosmic, Kree, Pilot, Soldier, like all really fitting to uh, her character. 
um, in general. Um, just kind of, she's nuts. I'll just I'll go with that. Um, so for 200 points, she's got the Avengers team ability, seven range, two bolts. Uh, but kind of getting into her dial is kind of what makes her cool. Uh, so her top two clicks, and actually on her last two clicks, she has a special p- uh, speed power. Uh, she can either use charge or running shot, and then she can uh, – oh, she can use charge and running shot. I apologize. And then she can either use energy explosion or super strength. Uh, you get to choose which one. And and then she's got eight – you know, invulnerable – or I'm sorry, impervious uh, and perplex. So just kind of like how she's – how she comes into battle, you know, she just, she's got a battle plan set up, you know, energy blast from her hands for the energy explosion, obviously her super strength. Um, but what, what, what's kind of cool is like when you hit her, she starts to get better. Uh, cause when you start hitting her, so it's like her absorbing those, the, the energy that's kind of been put on her, which is, I think is pretty cool how it lines up, how she, uh, fights in the comic book and she gets, she goes in the pulse wave. Uh, she actually gets invincible and she kind of bounces between uh, Invincible and Pervious. And then when you get into her last three clicks, she gets a special um, defense, which is uh, she can use Energy Shield, Deflection, Super Senses, and Toughness. And then she gets Pulse Wave in her last two clicks. So just kind of, just all in all, you know, she you know, she has a perplex. is like, hey, I'm a good leader. Let me help you out. Uh, and then when you start punching on her, she's like, well, you're pissing me off, so let, I'm about to hit you hard back. Uh, I just felt like flavor wise, she actually matched up pretty well with her just um, depiction and comics. Mm. She, I, I really like this piece. I think I used the the one that's fifty points cheaper from the same set a few more mm-hmm. times than I used this one, but this is a really really good one too. Um, okay, Connor, do you have any last minute pitches about any of these figures? Yeah, mine looks better. That's a cooler <laughs> costume, and you know it. <laughs> that's all I got. Okay. Christian, you have any last minute thing you want to say about any of the pieces? Well, you know, I I would be remiss if I didn't give a shout out to the Age of Ultron super rare. Just like her costume is the uh, from like was it the seventies when her she first got yeah. introduced? Yeah, so, I, I think it's her original costume. And that feathered haircut. Oh man. Uh, but uh, no, I, I I don't want to sound biased. I, I mean, I really like uh, yours, Chris's, but I think mine might take the cake for me. Okay, all right. We're going to get on to the voting portion of this. I think it is safe to say, but just for posterity's sake, your vote is going to be for your own, Christian? Oh, yeah, for sure. Okay, locked in there. Calder, what is your vote? My vote is actually for Fear Itself, Captain Marvel, uh, Miss Marvel, because she had a battle axe. I mean, how can we compete with that? Uh, sorry. <sighs> um, no, my vote is actually <laughs> going to be for Chris's pick, because at the time when she came out, she uh, she destroyed me in so many battle royales in Guardians of the Galaxy in a set that I love so much. So it's actually going to have to go to Chris. Okay, all right, that's one and one. Uh, I do want to give a quick shout-out to the one from Thor that was garbage. That was the one mm. that I mentioned earlier. Uh, yeah. Why, why they thought it was a good idea to make a Captain Marvel post-rules changes where super strength did not work with hypersonic speed, I'll never know. But she did have the sweet mohawk, so... That's well, also cool. a knock against Chris. Mohawk's not good looking. Not a good look. It is just great look. That is the look. best Carol Danvers look. Is Absolutely Mohawk. not. <laughs> Thighs all day, buddy. All I right. will fight you in Roblox. All right, my <laughs> my my uh, vote is going to go to. Do I have a die here, real quick? Because I can't real. I can't really decide. I don't think I have a die. Look at this guy. I can't really decide. I really like both of them from the Guardians of the Galaxy. Like, I liked mine because I used it so many times, but it just doesn't do what it's supposed to do anymore. But if you really think about the flavor of, like, hypersonic speed, super strength, they still work together in the comics. So, like, Superman can run in or, like, fly in super speed with a train and smash you in the face. It's just the mechanics changed in this game, and it, like, eviscerated some of these older characters and with what they can do. Uh, you know what? Just despite that rules change, I'm going to throw in my vote for 207 Gravity Feed Captain Marvel, and that is going to be the official Dial H for Hero Clicks Captain Marvel. Hmm. See that? See that pressure? Oh, you right. It is decided. What was that, Connor? See that pressure I had to put on you there, though? I love that. <laughs> this guy. That's why I keep him around. He's okay. Uh. I kind of like him. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, 
There's that. Um, now, okay, we. I need to go back. Something bad happened. Well, something I learned that happened, not necessarily bad, but we need, need to rectify something. Um, at the beginning of every month, that's typically the uh, heroic ranking up ceremony at Double age, and found out something this week, and that is that the way Patreon works, um, it doesn't charge every person at the same time. And uh, why that matters is if our episodes come out really early at the beginning of the month, like on the, on the first or second, some people will have been charged. Some people will not have been charged, and I won't know that their heroic rank changed until later on in the month, and I feel really bad about that. So now we know, but I do need to rectify somebody, somebody that needed to be in uh, the heroic ranking up ceremony that was not in the heroic ranking up ceremony. Um, and that, that's actually going to be Christian Bo, or I'm sorry, <laughs> Eric Caves. Well, you can be super fan too, but, um, Eric Caves actually went from citizen all the way to super fan in one month, which is unprecedented with, uh, dial H. So I did want to give like a huge shout out to that, uh, and say thank you very much. And now from now on, he will always be a super fan on the podcast. So we really appreciate that, man. Um, speaking of, Dial H works off the value for value model, and our goal is to entertain you guys and gals. And if you feel like we give you uh, some entertainment in your life, consider showing us your love and jumping on our Patreon like uh, super fan Eric Caves did. Um, and you can get your heroic title, uh, citizen, protagonist, vigilante, any of those through the different tiers of our little system. Um, and then it should be the first episode of every month is when you should get your title. So I'm going to see if we can figure that out a little bit better because that was weird. Maybe we'll have to start doing it like the second week of every uh, month just because – Sounds like an excuse I, to me, but whatever. I don't, I don't want that to happen again. You know, like that was just a really, yeah. really dumb thing that shouldn't have happened. And he wasn't the only one. There were two other people that weren't charged until after the first episode. Um, their ranks didn't change, but they were charged afterwards, and I didn't know about it until I looked uh, at everything again. So – yeah, that was really weird. Yeah, let's let's get into community after all that. There are dozens of us. Dozens. Oh man, this is a really fun community that we got this week. <laughs> um, every week on Twitter and on Facebook, we put a community Tuesdays question up for you guys to jump on and answer. Um, this week's community Tuesdays question was, if I can find it, it. In honor of Fat Tuesday, or Mardi Gras, as it is also called, who is your favorite pudgy hero click? Uh, Calder, who's your favorite pudgy hero click? You know, for the longest time, it was Big Bertha for, like, early long time. But this new uh, dad bod Spider-Man, he's, he's really taking the cake, I tell you what. <laughs> really win it, won you over with the dad bod? He did. No, he really did. He really did. All right. All right. What about you, Christian? Um, uh, it's, it's Volstagg. Because that guy, <laughs> he's got a he's got a freaking turkey leg, and he's holding the sword and he's got his turkey leg, so he's munching and chopping. And, and, and what's funny about his dial, he's got the what's it, the charge quake, so you, just, you can just picture him on his big body just running. I'm gonna quake him, and then you know it's just I imagine it's fantastic. Like how, um... How DDD or da 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 King DDD does in Super Smash Bros. How when he, he runs up and then he belly flops on someone. That's what I <laughs> yes, every time. Exactly. Yeah. And he's you just know, munching you, on a turkey leg. Yeah. If you read the comics, Valsag is always used as the comedic relief in Thor comics. hundred oh, percent. So he's he's really funny. Like he's actually a very interesting character. And when they like flesh him out and show you his family and his wife and stuff like that, you're like, oh man, I really like Valsag. He's a great nice. character. So that is a good pick. My pick is going going to be uh the penguin Ooh. i actually <laughs> i don't know why when i was a kid uh the batman the animated series was a thing and i mm. remember getting some of the toys and i remember getting the bat the penguin toy and it had multiple umbrella toys in it and little penguins that you <laughs> i thought it was so cool yes i don't know why it's just the nostalgia of it it was really good stuff so mine's gonna be the penguin i'm gonna start nice. us out on twitter and that is going to be Vigilante. First answer is going to be Vigilante Collectible, who said, The Blob! The GSX one with the shoes. Why did the Days of Future Past one go shoeless? Okay, so I looked into this. All right? It's not something I should have spent my time on, but I did anyway. 
I looked back and forth at these two models. Legit. Stop. Sh it's citizen or uh, the collectible is body shaming the blob. That's what I got out of this. He got <laughs> fatter. <laughs> No joke. The GSX one is actually not as fat as the uh, Days of Future Past one. Oh, he's definitely so fatter. I think I, I think he's just like, I don't want to wear shoes anymore. I can't wear shoes anymore. None of them fit me. I think that's what it is. <laughs> wow, collectible. Wow. Uh, Matthew Armour said, uh, Volsteg, math off and he'll beat you with his meat. <laughs> 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 Loyal, uh, Loyal Miller said, I like Big Tony, and Kingpin from the Superior Foes was awesome, too. J.R. Smith said, not my favorite. In fact, I hate this figure. And he's talking about the Kingpin. My 13-year-old son plays a lot of Hydra. It's never fun to have four or five Kingpins from Superior Foes hanging in the back with Baron Strucker while my son oh. gets to outwit from 15 to 40 small little expendable Hydra mooks anywhere on the map. So, yeah, the a little salty there. A little salty. I, uh, I just like the mooks. <laughs> hey, you mooks. <laughs> uh, Rex Jungle Cat on Twitter says pizza face. Um, yeah, he's a little blobby. A little blobby. A little bit. A little bit. Uh, I'm sorry, but I had to interject. Uh, every time I see pizza face, all I can think of is Pizza the Hut from Spaceballs. Oh, dude. Agreed. <laughs> so agree. Every time I see pizza face, I can't help but fixate on the mushroom on his forehead. <laughs> just saying. Right. Just saying. Uh, <laughs> John yeah. Eric Hafford said, uh, "Mojo so big he needs assistance." <laughs> Not doing the space, John. <laughs> <laughs> All right, vigilante porcupine spaceship grenade said, "Ball stag." I like playing him with Destroyer Thor Prime in casual games to give Destroyer Thor some more survivability without needing Jing Foster or other characters that use support. That actually is um, – I know that they remade him in the Mighty Thor set, but I will still play the one from the Hammer of Thor. I like that one better. All right. Fair enough. Uh, David Herberger said, anyone have some love for Pizza Face and – He's only six dollars and ninety nine cents on CoolStuffInc.com. Really like. Oh hey! Nice yes. luck. So is a large <laughs> pizza. Hey! <laughs> you can buy one large pizza, which is you're gonna eat it, and it's gonna be gone forever. Or you can get a mushroom stamped pizza face. <laughs> Just saying, it's right there for you on Cool Stuff. Uh, uh, the big Stabowski said turtle from the Flash set. Or turtle. Superfan Eric Cave said, I was going to say Mojo so I realized how many good penguin figures existed. Got the most use out of that Robo Penguins point that I usually end up running out of actions long before I run out of attackers. Uh, he also works very well as a nice source of mastermind targets or even 40 to eight, uh, 40 point 18 defend piece. That Robo Penguin gives me so many pains in the butt having playing against him, so it's a good pick. It's a pretty good pick. So, by the way, anytime I hear the penguin. In my head, and I think this is from the 1960s Adam West, uh, when the Penguin was on there. He like the sound effect that he made because it was so hokey back then. He was like Wah! all the time. <laughs> so like yep. I can't hear the Penguin with, or I can't hear anyone say the Penguin without immediately thinking, "You'll never take me alive, Batman!" <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's uh, great. Uh, <laughs> Protagonist Michael Miller said that pudgy Spider-Man for certain. Yeah. Uh, Abel Alvarado Jr. said uh, GSX-033, the blob, the original big boy. Honorable mention <laughs> to uh, uh, Batman Amity series, Detective Harvey Bullock, who is literally holding a half-eaten donut, Homer Simpson <laughs> style. That's great. <laughs> we need more hero clicks holding food. I agree. It's a thing. All right, uh, we have Jedi Legend that said, my mate ran a, well, walked a pudgy team. They really pulled their weight. Oh, <laughs> he's got them jokes. Uh, and then GSX, Harry Leland. I oh, forgot. Wow. He's got like a nice wow. old gut going on in his head. Right. Mm. Nice. Uh, Jake Carl's, Carl Isle. Carl, I'm sorry, man. Uh, he said gold balls. So there's one for gold balls. I love gold balls. I forgot he existed until this question. <laughs> so, yeah, no. He, I changed mine from the penguin to gold balls. Uh, <laughs> Vigilante 
uh, Ben Jones said, spent some time looking at which one I like, and I think it's Big Bertha. Enjoy playing Great Lakes Avengers teams for fun, and she is a big part of it. <laughs> Pun intended. Oh, my gosh. That was so bad. <laughs> uh, next up was Jeff Pollier, and he said, honestly, I'm just glad they made a Mahunkle figure. Mahunkle is, uh, took me a while to figure out what he meant by Ma Hunkle, and he was talking about that one chick, Red Tornado, from Harley Quinn and the Gotham Girls. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have, uh, let's see, Superfan, the Ruffy, little plastic superhero, said, Joker's Wild Fast Forces, the Penguin. <laughs> 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 his his dealmaker trait can make good characters great. And there's emojis for penguins on Twitter, and he totally put so. I forgot it was a thing. I didn't. Oh, uh, that's, that's awesome. wonderful. Good stuff. <laughs> Tristan Campos said it's a three-way tie: Fat Spider-Man from Earth X, Bouncing Boy, and the Penguin. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, however you say it. <laughs> Chris Cart said Big Bertha, Great Lakes Avengers forever. Nice. Uh, Jake Robinson said Spider-Man currently. So that is subject to change if we get another thicker. Uh, hero click coming out. Just saying. It. Thick with thick with two C's. Two C's. That's how you know it's legit. All right, Jay Sanson said fat, fat Spider Man. <laughs> Just <laughs> a lot of people loving this Fat Spider Man. Dude, he's so good. Oh my gosh. Uh, I know what so the cosplay good. is now. Dude, yes, <laughs> yes. How easy of a cosplay would that be too for a lot of people? Like, just get some sweats and paint them. Get some tight sweats because those are man. See, there's that little space between his like boots and calves. He's like, that's that's far the pants go. Yeah, yeah, I love it. You get like a costume with the Peter Parker spider. Yeah, do it. Um, Justin Quinn Honeycutt, love the name, said. Him's my favorite big boy, and it's the turtle with the leotard, the big G. I don't know what his name is. is Gravitex? Yeah, Gravitex. Yeah, there you go. Oh, he, yeah, he's a thick boy. He's a thick boy. All right, uh, the last answer I have is from Alan John Wilkinson said Unicron. Oh, wait, too soon. Unicron, if you don't know, is a transformer. So he's, he's just being optimistic for uh, the future uh, is what I'm seeing. Yeah. Maybe he a thick boy, too. <laughs> <laughs> Last but not least, Jeff Faro said, aw, yeah. You guessed it. Dad bought Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm out, man. Do you anymore? I'm out. No, that's it, man. Oh, well, that was good timing. Good timing. Okay, all right. Uh, well, there's all your favorite pudgy hero clicks out there in uh, Dial H community, so I'm glad, I'm glad that happened. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on to Jedi Hero Clicks Tip of the Week. Help you, I can. <laughs> Take you to your destination, I will. Energy Explosion deals two damage to every target. If you have three bolts and some poor soul in the splash zone of all three targets, guess how much they take? That's right, only two damage. It does not stack. Calder, have you made this mistake? Hey, whoa, hey, hey, hey. It's, it's not a cues. Yeah, I have, actually. Yeah, I've done. <laughs> I, I thought it would work that way. I just, I multi target. That guy's taken four. Obviously, two at a time. Just. Well, you know, it does make sense that, it, like, splash damage would be a thing yeah. from multiple See? sources, but unfortunately it's not. So anybody out there, don't forget that. Um, it may drastically change how your turn works. Oh, it's Christian, do you ever fall for this, too? Uh, not anymore, because we had a huge discussion when I actually started playing, and uh, we thought that's the way it worked, and then we spent an hour trying to research it, and that's the conclusion we came to. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, well, there's his tip of the week. Hopefully that will remind some people out there how to play the game until WizKids decides to change the rules again. We got a message from Jason Levine that said, A, or are you A, surprised about Orville clicks? Call her yes or no? Yes, really surprised. Why? All right, I'm, I'm, I'm super surprised. What about you, Christian? Yeah, I mean, I wasn't expecting it. It just kind of came out of nowhere. All right, and B, who would you like to see made... Calder, do you even have an answer I, for this? Uh, Mr. Orville, right? <laughs> That's not a thing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the Orville is the name of the ship. So uh, ah, yes, like how in Star made? Trek, the name of the ship was the Star Trek. Sure. Does <laughs> that make sense? Uh, okay, all right. Well, Calder doesn't have I an answer. Do you have – have you family, watched it, Christian? The family Guy, voice guy, whoever he plays, that guy. He plays all of them. <laughs> he plays a good. No, amount. that's uh, he's the captain. That's Ed Mercer is his name. Uh, 
Uh, Clearly, I'm the only one. Seth MacFarlane. Yeah, because Seth MacFarlane. Whatever yeah, his Seth name MacFarlane. Is. I, I, you know, I wish that they would bring some of his personas back because he helped write Johnny Bravo, and that would just be great if we could get a Johnny Bravo quicks in the Orville set. But that won't happen. But no, no, I don't watch Orville. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Everybody should watch Orville. That's the last time Johnny I'm going to play it. Clicks instead of Orville clicks, I would. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm pretty. Mama. <laughs> hey there, pretty mama. <laughs> Wait a minute. I think, I think that I have a soundbite for that, actually. Really? I don't really remember, I don't remember where it's at, but it's Press probably me. on you're here somewhere. Time. I'm, oh, sick, wait, I'm curious. I'm pretty. You're pretty. What do you say we go home and stare at each other? <laughs> That's great. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so to answer it from my end, um, if they make anyone past who they said that they're going to make, which are like seven of the eight of the main characters, um, I think I would really like to see Yafit. He's like this little blob, which is voiced by, of all people, Norm Macdonald, which I find absolutely <laughs> hilarious because I really like Norm, Mac Norm, Norm Macdonald. Um, and then on top of that, uh, so uh, the character Isaac, um, I cannot remember what his race is called, but at oh. some point you meet a lot of them in the show, and I think it would be really good to have like uh, generic versions yeah. of them. And then there's one that's leading them. His name is called Primary. So have that one. So you remember back in Guardians of the Galaxy where we got, like, generic generics, and then we got some named characters right. that were uh, uh, just the same sculpt, and they kind of, like, swapped out a head. But same sculpt, di di different, different character, and then a different dial. I think they should do the same thing. I think it would be really easy uh, with that. And then the main adversaries for most of the uh, – the show are if if no one out there watches it, it's kind of like I can't remember what their name either. They're they're effectively like the Borg of the TV show, but they can make generics of them as soldiers and stuff as well. I think that would be like a really easy generic to make, and uh, it would be interesting to see. So that is my answer. Awesome. I think that's it in community that we got from everybody else. You don't have anything from Facebook, do you? No, uh, we do have one. It's Malcolm Rush, but Malcolm, we'll get it. We'll get you next week. This is next week for sure. Promise. <laughs> Promise. We'll Please. He's gonna push it out indefinitely. See, he's gonna listen to it and he's gonna be like, "All right, sure, guys, sure, okay." So see how it is. If Chris wouldn't have put so many stupid penguin jokes, in there, <laughs> then we could have answered my question. Yeah, and the thing is, you make him wait till the end. That's true. I should just message him right now. Like, hey, you don't have to listen to it. Like, right away. Malcolm, do you only listen to the podcast because of the questions? That's what I want to know. Oh, like, dude, don't like, call oh. Malcolm out right now. Jeez. <laughs> wow. These stupid penguin jokes. Nobody wants to hear that. <laughs> yes. All right. Um... All right. Uh, as as a reminder, we have a Dial H home base initiative ongoing. So if you play at a local venue in a state inside of the United States, uh, why don't you message us on Twitter or on Facebook, and uh, you can claim that territory as the official Dial H home base in your state if the state has not already been accounted for. And for every country outside of the United States, you can claim your country. And the only countries right now that are claimed are Finland and Australia. So there's a lot of them out there that are still unclaimed. I'm looking at you, Canada. Wait, What's in Canada? Nobody claimed Canada, right? Did somebody claim Canada? So. I don't think so. So the person that sent us in Canada, if there is one, is going to be like, how dare you? How dare you? <laughs> no, 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 no one Respect the great Canada. white north. <laughs> <laughs> I remember what it was. Someone said that they moved from Canada oh, to Australia. Oh, that's right. That was Chris. That's, okay. That's what it was. Yep. No, that's we're what it was. Okay. Safe. Um. As also, we don't have any birthdays this week, so if you have an upcoming birthday, just let us know who it is, when it is, and we'll give you that sexy Dial H for Here Clicks official Arabian birthday out on the podcast. Okay. I I'm done in community. Calder, do you have anything else in community? Done, man. I'm good. All right. There, dog. As always, we have to thank our super fan. Christian Bogan for coming on. We really appreciate you coming on, man. Thank you so much. Oh, uh, man. No, the pleasure's all mine. Uh, you guys are awesome. Keep doing what you're doing. And, uh, <laughs> 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 please, everyone, oh. do that and annoy all of your gaming group <laughs> every time you hear the penguin. Um, all right. Calder. We have merch. Plug that merch. Oh, we got merch. So I did put up a picture on Facebook of the Howdy Howdy Let's Get Rowdy shirts. 
that was so expertly designed by yours truly. And of course, there's just another shirt that's the Dial H logo. But you can get those in stickers. Uh, I know someone got it on a mug. So that is our Redbubble. So it's really cool because I just throw out a design and then you order it. And then, it, you know, eventually it takes about a week or so for it to get made and then to ship out to you. And we get a little cut from Redbubble. So if you want to support the podcast and you want to get some really cool stuff for it, uh, you can go ahead and do that. So check it out. Redbubble, I link it in the show notes on Facebook. And I did just throw up a link today. All right. That is like at least three ways that you can support the podcast. But if you for don't sure. want to spend any money, the best thing that you could always do is – Share us on Facebook, retweet us, like us on Twitter. That would really appreciate, or we would really appreciate that. And speaking of, if you do want to find us on Twitter, you can find us at Dial H for Hero Clicks. That is the number four on Facebook. Just search Dial H for Hero Clicks. Make sure you like our page. I think our, we're getting closer to 800, man. We're getting really I close. Hit, I, I want to hit 800. So go on to Facebook, make alternate accounts just to like our thing, so we can cheat and hit 800. Uh, <laughs> And uh, if you want to send us an email, you can send it to dialhforheroclicks at gmail.com. Thank you, everybody, and thank you, uh, superfan Christian Bogan. Thank you. Uh, Christian Bogan, before I read us out of here, did you want to plug anything before we left, maybe your home venue again one more time, or shout out to anyone you know? Uh, No, I mean, just shout out to my local guys that I get to play with, uh, Dean Ferguson, Ethan Ferguson, and uh, Loyal Miller. Those guys are awesome. Love how they, we, you know, we all support each other. And uh, yeah, that's it. All right. Awesome. Then I'll read us out of here. As a reminder, Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com. You can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and seal products. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Bye, guys. Happy trails. You'll never take me alive, Batman! Rawr! Jeez.